In this video, I want to share with you how you can create some dark ambient drone type patch with the Nord drum, and here's how it sounds like. So first of all, hi and welcome to this video. My name is Janis and as you could see and hear, the Nord drum can sound pretty dystopian and it's actually super fun to create those ambient patches. And here I selected some empty patch. So we're going to create the patch from scratch. And before making any sounds, we already set up the reverb because this one is really important for those ambient textures. I think all of those sounds you heard were basically drowned in reverb and it's just really fun. And a reverb setting I really like for that is the hall setting. So if you go to the reverb type, you select the hall. I mean, or whatever you like, but the hall is just great. And I tend to make it a little darker. So I set this to maybe minus five. Let's first start with this dark ambient drone. It's on pad three. And also here we can already send some of the sound into the reverb. So we basically edit the sound while listening to the reverb. For this type of sound, it actually makes sense. And we are going to pitch it down because it's a very low tone. Also interesting. I mean, actually, if you send stuff into reverb from the beginning, you get lots of interesting sounds. But here I was just using a sawtooth wave. And if you change the left value, and bring it to, I think, 24. We have some lower octave, so it's like some dark to oscillator synthesizer sound. It needs to be way longer, so actually I chose the long decay, which is what the L stands for, and maybe even crank it up to the maximum setting. And then you can just tweak the filter and possibly make it a bit darker, because uh, let's actually start with the darkest setting. Don't know if you can hear it, it's basically only bass, but somehow still quite interesting. So you can basically find a sweet spot for the filter by just changing the frequency value. Or alternatively, you can also bring it back down and change the dynamic filter amount because this will add more movement, but it can actually be something you prefer. So it gets a little darker over time. And it also allows you to play more dynamically because you could see that I started with some very soft roll and then I played louder and you can include those dynamics into your drone. And therefore the drone actually sounds quite dynamic, which is really cool because it's uh, through the roll technique. I think it doesn't even have to be some perfect roll. Even if you have some, let's say, limited technique, you can still make single strokes and by just... Um, by just controlling your volume or how loud you play, just control the sound of the drone. For the patch I actually ended up choosing 11 and 3 as the values for the filter and also, I cranked up the distortion and I mean, cranking up the distortion is always incredibly fun if you want to make some dark dystopian sounds with the Nord drum. So let's just see how it affects the sound. If 
feel like sometimes you just hit a sweet spot with a Nord drum where a sound just really starts singing and sounds incredibly emotional, even if it's this dark. And I feel like that's a good example for that. But let me know if you feel the same way. Next, let's also add some noise layer. And if you send noise into a big reverb, it just always immediately sounds like some nice ambient texture. Before editing the sound, we need to make sure that the mix value is on 50 for noise and 0 for tone, because by default it always starts with 50 for tone, but no noise. Let's also already send it into the reverb. I think 25 is a good amount, so it's like some 50-50 setting. And then on this pad we get some noise. Again, let's choose some longer decay and why not choosing the maximum value for the longest type of decay. And for each type of filter you have different intensities, which means uh, basically how drastically they take away the frequencies. So as some example, let's increase the frequency to 5 and L1 has this type of sound, while L2 it's actually darker, you barely hear it, which means L2 takes away frequencies more strongly. And then you have some other types of filters like a band pass. Let's check them out. This one sounds too bright for my taste. But actually B2 could work as well. Then you also get high pass filters, which will sound very bright, actually, uh, I'm gonna be careful here. Yeah, you see, they are super bright. And if you take away the frequencies, you get this kind of fizzly, fuzzy sound. So it's not necessarily what I was looking for when I was creating dark ambient type patches. So my best pick is here definitely the low pass filter. And then you can also play with the resonance because if you increase the resonance and then again play with the frequency, you will find some interesting spots where the filter just almost creates a tone or just uh, boosts certain frequencies that make it sound more charismatic often in my opinion. And of course you can bring in the dynamic filter, but I feel like it's very sensitive. So if you want to have some soundscapes, it can kind of interrupt the flow. So let's check it with the mildest setting. And that's actually fine. This is how you can bring in some dynamics, but if this value would be at three, it's already way more difficult to control. And for the intro patch I actually picked L1 and 19 for the resonance and the filter I opened up to 14 without dynamics. Actually I thought I want to have it in this more floating undynamic way. So it's always a choice of taste. So maybe you prefer having some more dynamics. As a contrast to those dark sounds, I also wanted to have those haunting long FM type bells that are also creating some feedback. And besides using the reverb, I also use some delay here. And since the feedback is kind of a central part of the sound, let's already set it up. So for the delay, uh, I picked some super short delay time. Actually, it's the shortest and increased a little the feedback. And so let's now put it on this pad. So it gets sent into the reverb. Actually, I think I chose 23 here and into the delay. So now we should already get some sort of feedback. Even the basic sound sounds kind of cool with just the, feed, the feedback and the reverb. But um, I also first added some distortion because this was supposed to be some super dark feedbacking distorted sound. So after setting up the effects first, um, I actually chose a pitch, I think it was 63. And I knew I want to have this sort of dark FM type thing. So for FM sounds, it's always super important to first bring down the dynamic filter, maybe keep it at one. And again, for the decay, it just needs to be long. And then we can go to the FM setting and basically browse through either like the F 
algorithms like F1234 and also through the different spectra settings. So let's actually see what happens. So if you want to create something creepy, I think this is definitely the way to go. Actually, F3 is even the least tonal sounding algorithm. super amazed by the FM section of the Nordrum. It can just sound so beautiful but also incredibly creepy. It's pretty amazing. And I think in the end I ended up using F1. Actually, where are we here? And with a setting of 68. And the other settings should be kind of the same. Because then you can just copy this pad to also pad 5 and choose a second pitch. I think it was just uh, three semitones lower. And as you can see, you can just do so much more than just boom chuck type drum sounds with the Nord drum, although also those are incredibly fun to make. And if you really want to dive deep into the instrument and really want to understand all the parameters and how you can make all sorts of sounds, basically produce full songs of music by just using the Nord drum, be known that I made a class about sound design with the Nord drum, giving you tons of examples explaining all parameters. So if you're interested in that, just check out the link down below in the description. Let's also check out this creepy sound here. And a cool concept for creating kind of creepy distorted sounds is to play around with the sample reduction because we've been using the distortion already, but this time we're going to use SA, the sample reduction. And I think I just um, used the setting of 36, but you can basically start with the default patch and already experience the kind of um, sounds that you get out of this. So you get super interesting resonances. Let's already make the decay longer. And here I was again just basically setting up the sample reduction. I think in the 30s, that's a great region to start with if you want to build sounds based on sample reduction. And then you can, I mean, try all algorithms again, since I'm I love the, the FM sounds of the Nordram so much. I ended up playing around with the FM sounds again. But this time with no dynamic filters, so I wanted to have something more static again, just some kind of timbre, I think I was somewhere here. So if you want to make some experimental music, basically all you have to do is play one pad and browse through the FM settings, somehow it sounds kind of cool as well. But I also wanted some higher pitch, I think I even, actually I have it on my first pad here, I chose 96.5 for the tuning. Uh, uh, I don't know why, but for some reason here it sounded cool and I wanted to have this high fuzzy sound that doesn't necessarily sound so tonal because the sample reduction is destroying it anyways. Ah, and we actually didn't add the reverb yet. You see, there's already lots of material for creating some more haunting type patches. So also if you stumble upon a setting you really feel like sharing, be warmly invited to share it down below in the comments. And on the last pad I have this sort of distorted timpani sound. That without the distortion, the reverb and also with a shorter decay just sounds like some typical classical orchestra percussion timpani sound. 
Now, I actually already explained how to make this type of sound in some other video, which you can find here. It's about making percussion sounds with the Nord drum. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you didn't already, just give it a quick like if you enjoyed it. And apart from that, I just wish you lots of inspiration with whatever it is that you create and I hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.